Okay, so here is a network that is represented as a matrix. And we can be asked to use Prim's algorithm straight from the matrix if required. So just to make sure that you understand exactly what this matrix is showing us, or this array, is that you could represent this as a graph. So there are five vertices, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E. A is connected to B by an edge of four, uh, to D an edge of three, and E with an edge of three. Okay, and then B is connected to C by an edge of five, and it's also connected to E with an edge of six. And then C is connected to B, we know that. C is connected to D by an edge of 8 and connected to E with an edge of 7. And D is connected to uh, A, C and E, like so, with an edge of 2. OK, so you can represent the matrix with a graph, or a network rather, OK, like that. Um, that's a possible question, I guess. Um, I would start with the vertices evenly spaced and do it as I did to actually build up the graph. Um, or you could have a graph that you need to write into the matrix format. Could possibly be a question. Okay, But we don't need to do this to answer this problem. You, you can use the matrix um, with Prim's algorithm straight off without having to do prims on the graph, okay? So that's just really a demonstration of what this matrix is representing and what it's showing us, okay? But we don't need that. So how do we set this out? Well, there is a specific way uh, that the exam board would like you to do this, and I suggest writing, also, writing down also the list of edges as you choose them, much as we would if we were working with a graph. So let's say we're told to start at A. Okay? And the first thing that we do is we write the number one in a circle on top of the A. This signifies that we are starting here. This is our first vertex that we're starting with. Now, what we do then is we delete the rest of the row. Okay, And what that's going to do, each time we delete a row, is to make sure that we have no cycles. That is the purpose of doing this, is to make sure that we then don't choose an edge that will get us back to A to create a cycle. And you look down the column of A to pick the shortest edge. Okay, and we go, right, there's a 4, there's A is not connected to C, so that's not counted and then A to D, A to E, they're both on 3. And we could pick either, okay, because this is one of those cases where we're going here. If more than one arc could be chosen, pick one at random. So I'm going to pick D. I circle it. I delete the rest of the row, because I don't want to come back to D and create a cycle. And then we put the number 2 over the top of the D, okay, to signify that we've gone to that vertex second. Now, here, I would also write down AD3, okay, to, to make sure I've got a definitive record of the edges that I've picked in that order. So now, right, if you remember thinking back to the graph, at this point, we're looking at all the edges coming out of both A and D. So you're looking down both A and D's column at the same time to pick the shortest edge. So we've got a 4, a 3, an 8, and a 2. So the shortest one of those is the 2. So that's the one I pick. Delete the rest of the row to make sure we don't form a cycle. And we've now connected E. So the next one was DE. OK. And now I'm looking down both A, D, and E because I'm looking at the edges coming out of those vertices. We've got a 4, an 8, a 6, and a 7. So we've got to pick the 4 next. So I delete the rest of the row because I don't want to form a cycle. 
and that will get me to B. So that's number four. So that was A, B. Okay, and now I'm looking down A, B, D, and E. Now there's nothing connecting left to connect A to. B is the shortest at five, so I circle five, delete the rest of the row, make sure I write the number five on the top of C, and I've connected B, C there. So five vertices, four edges, so the total of minimum, the minimum spanning tree is 5, 9, 14. Okay? And that's how we can use prims on a matrix in order to find the minimum spanning tree.